Hi, and welcome back to the Productivity and Efficiency Analysis Lectures. So in the second part of the introduction, uh, I will introduce you the concept of uh, frontier production function and uh, indicate some taxonomy of uh, different methods of estimating it. So firstly, let us connect it to the, to the previous uh, introduction of the conceptual setting. So remember that uh, we decompose the productivity growth to three sources, which we technical progress, efficiency improvement, and structural change. So how does the pro frontier production function relate to any of these? So firstly, we need the frontier production function to understand the technical progress. So uh, technical progress is, uh, is understood as the shift of the frontier production function over time, which indicates that there is uh, uh, further possibilities with the, with the technology. On the other hand, uh, efficiency is usually measured relative to the frontier. So all these uh, types of efficiency, technical efficiency, scale efficiency, and allocative efficiency, they are all, all measured relative to the uh, frontier production function. So therefore, let me introduce you then a, a model of, uh, of uh, frontier production function. So I will do it in the, uh, in the case of the single output first. We will later generalize it to the multiple output setting, including this kind of bad outputs like, like greenhouse gas emissions. And another thing is here, we focus now for now to a static setting. So there is no, no change of time. Of course, we can easily introduce here then the, the time index, but for the moment we focus on the, on the static setting in a, in a given, given time period. So I assume we have uh, uh, n firms uh, indexed by i that runs from uh, 1 to n. And uh, the frontier production function is here uh, indicated by the symbol f. So this f is just a function, like, like, like functions in, in uh, mathematics, that indicates the, the maximum amount of output that can be uh, generated uh, with the given input resources, which are indicated by x. So here, this argument of f this x is indicated with the bold font for reason. So uh, the bold font refers to the, the fact that, uh, that x is thought of as a vector. So it has multiple inputs, uh, at least capital and labor, but potentially also materials, energy, and so on and so on. So there are multiple inputs in this, in this setting. So x is a vector of this, uh, uh, these different inputs. So you can think about it as a as a, as a column vector, for example, that there is multiple elements and, and, and each row of this, uh, this vector indicates uh, the, the value of that particular input. And uh, the function f indicates then what is the maximum output that can be generated with these inputs. So then we draw a distinction between the maximum output and the actual observed output. And the actual observed output is, uh, is uh, here labeled by, by symbol y. So yi is the output of uh, firm i. And uh, this uh, equation on the top of the slide indicates that uh, our actual output is equal to the f of x, which was the maximum output. And then we have also two types of deviations from this maximum output. The first one is, uh, is labeled uh, ui. Which, uh, which refers to uh, asymmetric inefficiency term. And then we have another VI, which refers to the random noise term. So the actual output that, that, uh, that realizes it is the maximum frontier output F of X minus inefficiency U plus any potential random noise V. So in this sense, the the, this unified model then takes into account uh, the frontier production function. It takes into account the possibility that there is inefficiency in the production. And uh, notable in this inefficiency term is it is one-sided, so it can be only negative. And then there can be also random noise in the, in the data indicated by V. 
Uh, one interpretation for we it could be, for example, measurement errors in this uh, in this output, but uh, there can be also influences of uh, omitted factors such as uh, unobserved heterogeneity in the outputs or inputs uh, for that matter. Uh, any any kind of uh, um, heterogeneity that we do not really explicitly control for in the in the uh, input vector x and the production function that would go to the v. Of course, also the the for example misspecification of the functional form of the frontier would also uh, then be included in this random noise term. So, like in in um, basic econometric models or, or regression analysis, if you like, this v is the usual kind of uh, error term that we have in the regression model. So the main thing that uh, that, that de deviates this uh, this frontier model from the from the usual regression models is the presence of this asymmetric inefficiency term u. And I have here indicated the the reference to the to the book chapter where you can read more about this kind of unified frontier model. So uh, in the static setting and single output uh, case, uh, the unified frontier model actually. Uh, covers uh, virtually everything that uh, this has been written about the frontier estimation and efficiency analysis. All models can be thought of as uh, special cases of this kind of kind of setting in one form or another. So let me then introduce to you the taxonomy of different different approaches. So here is this kind of kind of uh, uh, table. And the purpose of this table is to then put these uh, different types of uh, approaches and methods considered in this course to, to, uh, to their context. So let's first look at this, uh, these different rows. So on top of the table, there is this uh, uh, row average curve. So that would refer to the estimation of average production function, for example, with the uh, standard linear regression techniques like ordinary least squares. Come back to that uh, shortly, and then the bottom part of the table uh, with the label frontier then uh, describes uh, alternative uh, possibilities for estimating the the best practice frontier. And the frontier part is also also then uh, split between so-called deterministic approaches, and there are two special cases. Uh, identifying the sign constraint deterministic models and two stage deterministic models and then uh, there is stochastic approaches on the bottom row of the of the table um, if you think about the columns there are three columns in this table if, with the methods uh, the first column refers to parametric methods and parametric method uh, like for example linear regression refers to the fact that the, the functional form of the production frontier is uh, specified beforehand, which is not the case in, the, in, the, in general in the unified model that we just discussed. Then the middle and the, and the rightmost column are referred to as non-parametric approaches. And, and these non-parametric approaches are further uh, split between so-called local averaging approaches and axiomatic approaches. So in the non-parametric approaches, we do not uh, specify the functional form of the uh, frontier F beforehand, but uh, the non-parametric approaches in general uh, are based on the idea that we, we let the data speak for themselves. And we, we have certain assumptions, of course, about the production function, but we do not specify the, the, the frontier production function explicitly beforehand. So we will discuss a variety of these, uh, these uh, techniques uh, during the course. I should note that in the, in the literature of the uh, productivity and efficiency analysis, if you remember these uh, five most uh, cited articles that I referred to in my, my first video lecture on introduction, uh, there were papers by Charles Cooper and Rhodes, uh, Michael Farrell, and there was also Aigner, Lovell and Schmidt mentioned as uh, in the top five and those papers they they relate to the data envelopment analysis or DEA method indicated in the red color in this slide 
and the Aiknell, Lovell and Smith paper refers to the uh, stochastic frontier analysis, uh, which I have indicated here with the, with the blue color. So uh, if you think about the frontier estimation uh, literature, as you can see from this, uh, this table with the taxonomy, the DEA and SFA approaches, uh, they are um, in the opposite spectrums of this, of the range of models. Uh, DEA, we can think about it as an axiomatic, non-parametric method, but it's also deterministic. Deterministic here means that we do not take into account stochastic noise. I will clarify that uh, in more detail shortly. Whereas uh, SFA indicated with the blue color stochastic frontier analysis, it's a fully parametric approach, but it's stochastic in the sense that uh, it uh, does take into account the, the stochastic noise term V. So there has been uh, a lot of interest in uh, trying to reconcile these, uh, these uh, uh, two opposite approaches of, of DEA and SFA uh, in the literature. And um, I would argue that the most successful uh, implementation of unifying these axiomatic and, and stochastic uh, approaches is the stoned approach, uh, uh, which comes from stochastic non-parametric envelopment of data that uh, me and my, my uh, co-authors, for example, Mika Kortalainen and many others have, have developed over the years. So uh, this approach we also discuss in the, in, the, in the course, but we will start with this uh, more classical approach is DEA and SFA to pave way towards this unified approach, which we refer to as stoned. So let's clarify a little bit then, how does the DEA then relate to this unified, uh, unified frontier model? So if you remember the, the general stochastic frontier model, which we have uh, introduced uh, before during this, uh, this video lecture, then uh, the DEA model can be stated in this way, that it is just the, the output is the function of the inputs uh, minus the inefficiency term, but we cancel out this uh, stochastic noise term. This is exactly why DEA is classified as a, as a deterministic method, because it does not uh, take into account the, the random noise term. Of course, uh, it doesn't mean that DEA is not uh, stochastic or probabilistic. Of course, uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, for example, random sampling already makes, makes DEA stochastic. So, so I do not claim that, uh, that there is not any, any, any uh, risk or uncertainty or, 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 or randomness or stochastic elements in DEA. In contrast, the DEA estimator is a probabilistic estimator I'm saying that the DEA model, and by model I mean the data generating process, how the data are generated, uh, it is deterministic in the sense that the random noise term is not taken into account. So this presentation of the, of the single output uh, uh, frontier model of, used for DEA, I have here a reference to Rajiv Banker's management science article where he also specifies the uh, data generating process underlying uh, DEA in this manner. And again, I mentioned that uh, later we will extend it to the multiple outputs, multiple input setting, which is where DEA very often operates in. So the opposite example, it was the parametric stochastic frontier approach. Uh, it is stochastic in the sense uh, that DEA is not because, because the random noise term V is included. So that is usually considered as the uh, key advantage of the SFA approach over the, over the DEA approach. However, SFA is a parametric method uh, in the sense that uh, the frontier production function uh, assumes specific uh, parametric structure beforehand. So here I have, I have indicated with the red color, I have introduced uh, uh, some parameter vector beta. So if you think about this, uh, these inputs X uh, measured in, in terms of uh, logarithmic units, so then this, this would kind of uh, expression would give us the classical uh, Cobb-Douglas production function. 
I come back to that uh, that uh, shortly in the in the in another lecture. But uh, the key aspect of this uh, the the what I want to indicate here with this uh, this red color making this beta parameter vector typically. Uh, the models that are estimated by, by SFA are linear in parameters. They do not have to be linear in terms of the input-output vectors, like, for example, the Cobb-Douglas production function or its generalization, the translog production function. But they are anyway linear in terms of parameters, which is not the, not the case with, uh, with DEA or, or the non-parametric approaches, where we do not really explicitly parameterize the functional form beforehand. So this is the key key aspect between the or key difference between the DA and SFA approaches. In some sense, uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, that the DA literature focuses essentially on the on the modeling of the frontier production function and puts very little attention to the to the composite error term consisting of U and V, whereas uh, SFA model all the action is actually on this on this uh, probabilistic modeling of u and v and this uh, this red part the parameter vector is just uh, just uh, taken as a given from uh, from the classical works like uh, cobb and douglas and and the works on transcendental logarithmic functions so it is not very difficult uh, at this level of the model to put these pieces together just replace this parametric uh, functional form with a more general um, axiomatic formulation of the of the frontier production function and we have the unified uh, model that I just uh, indicated or started with the before the introducing the taxonomy the main challenge with this unified model of course concerns the estimation how can we actually estimate such kind of uh, more general model but this is something that uh, that I save for a little bit later so in the lex next lecture, I will then uh, describe how productivity analysis uh, can be applied in the real world. And I describe a particularly interesting case uh, of uh, uh, incentive regulation of electricity distribution networks in Finland. So this is one of the areas where the techniques like DEA and SFA have has had a huge real world impact in, in, in practice. Thank you.